Hi Floss Tube, it's Isla here with my third Floss Tube video. Um, I'd intended to update my videos every couple of weeks, um, but this last weekend when I would normally do a video uh, was my husband's 30th birthday. As you might be able to see some leftover balloons from the celebration. So we had a really nice weekend. Um, yeah, so I wasn't able to upload the video that weekend, so... I'm doing it now a couple of days late so um, I didn't manage to get much stitching done last week work was really busy um, and most nights I barely got to sit down for 10 minutes before it was time to go to bed so um, but the week before that I got quite a lot done so I've got quite a bit to show you from then so I will start with um, what I've been working on today and what I'll carry on working on when I finished filming this. So it is the Clouds Factory postcard uh, stitch along. So I have completed, and I think I've showed you these in my last videos, I've completed New Delhi and Giza and then I have been working on the Rio de Janeiro postcard. So you can see needles still in the fabrics. I've literally just stop doing this just to record a video and I really want to get this finished by Monday because on the first of every month the new one is released so I'd like to in part keep up with all the ones that are released for the rest of the year so I'll then follow it along and then catch up with the others maybe when when it's finished so yeah really liking this one I think this one is my favorite one so far really like the colors in it so she's got some orange detail to be added after the green. And then there's the Christ the Redeemer statue over here. Um, and some other little bits and pieces to go in there as well. So yeah, I shall carry on with that for the rest of this week. And I should finish it by Monday because each one doesn't really take too long. Maybe four or five hours or so. Sounds long when I say it like that, but spread out over a week it's not too bad um yeah so this is stitched on 32 count linen belfast linen in vintage blue i think i said before i quite like this one for this because it's like the sky in the background of all the all the scenes i really like my needle minder i'm a pretty fan okay so that's that one really enjoying working on that so the next one now, this next one is the Lakeside Needlecraft uh, Mystery Stitch Along. Um, the border was released quite some time ago now, but I haven't been able to start stitching yet because my fabric hadn't arrived. Now, my fabric had taken, uh, well, I think I ordered it at the end of June, so it's taken almost a month and it arrived yesterday. Yay! I was so happy. Might not sound it in my voice. Sometimes I don't always sound how I feel, but yes, I was overjoyed when I saw that little packet on my mat yesterday morning. So, yeah, I was really happy. And the fabric is really, really lovely. I think well worth waiting for, although frustrating. I can see it was quite a time consuming process, so I'll try and show you. Now it looks quite green from here, but it's actually got quite a few different pastel shades in it. I'll try and show you some of these it's got blues greens yellows and pinks yeah if i hold it a bit further back hopefully there you can kind of see all the different colors in it it's called fantasy wings and it's in 32 count belfast linen from a company called the crafty kitten so yeah, I don't know if I said this, it's got sparkles in it. You can see the sparkles. So, yeah, really lovely. So, once, I keep telling myself, once I've finished the Rio postcard, I'm then going to start this. But I may just start this before. Because my plan is uh, to stitch this, I think it's this circle. But this purple border circle first in preparation for the first 
uh, design being released on the 1st of August. So as long as I have this circle and I put that in the right place by then, I'm then going to start, hopefully, and then be on a par with everybody else. Everybody in the Facebook group, well, it seems like everybody in the Facebook group is already uploading all their whips. Some people are even finished this whole thing. And I don't know if you can see how intricate the outer border is. Like your witch's hat, crown, I think that's a crown. Yeah, it looks like a crown. Butterfly. Rose is really pretty, really detailed. For some people have finished this already, and I haven't even started. But hopefully by the next time I upload a floss tube video, that will be different. But I anticipate I'll just have a purple circle and hopefully the start of a the first uh, design that's released on Monday. And then I'll just kind of do this as I go along, I think. Um, so yeah, after watching some other floss tube videos and people that like to use hand dyed thread, I thought I would give this a go. So I ordered some um, hand dyed thread from Crafty Kitten along with my fabric. This is called Twilight Shadow and it's a mix of blues, purples, yeah blues and purples in all different shades. So I'm thinking about giving this a go to do the purple circles just to kind of make it my own and experiment with some hand dyed thread. So I might test a bit first, see see how that goes and uh, see if I like the effect or not. I also got some hmm, where did I put that? Hmm. Oh I had two of these and now I've only got one so I must be somewhere. Um I also bought some DMC variegated thread which is in which is shade number four two three zero, and it's kind of all light blues and yeah, almost almost white blue, kind of mid blue, which I will think I think I might use for some of the blue detailing in this border. So yeah, kind of new for me, but I like to try new things with cross stitch, so you know, it keeps me interested and yeah, keeps me focused and uh, interested in all the different designs that I'm doing. I wonder where the other one has gone. Well, I've definitely ordered two. Oh well. Okay, so that's two of my kind of five current whips at the moment. I'm just going to put the things back in the folder so I don't lose anything else. <coughs> Okay, so that's that one. Um, just checking another one of flares. Nope. Oh well. Okay. Okay, so the next one I'll talk about. I've showed you before. It's the Boofal gardening design. Little Boofal with his wheelbarrow. That's this one. So I've had this kit in my stash since Christmas. And I made a start on it a couple of weeks ago, not long after I uploaded my last floss tube video. And I also chose to do this as part of the cross -sti no, Stitch Mania event. I think it's called It's the Sunshine Day, um, where you stitch on a summary design for the month of July. So I've made a start on this. Um, so yeah, these parts here are all the flowers in the wheelbarrow. So I've done all of this shade of pink and I've just started on this shade of purple and then there's some kind of pale pale pink that doesn't show up too well yet and some grey for the wheelbarrow shading here. So this fabric is a 14 count Ada and this is also from the Crafty Kitten I had in my stash for since oh, a couple of years ago maybe. I used to belong to their Fabric of the Month Club. And then I found as I wasn't really getting through it, I cancelled it, but um, I thought the colours were really lovely for summer. It's kind of peach and lemon, like raspberry kind of tones to it, which I thought was really nice. So um, I was a little bit worried about some of the colours not showing up on this fabric, but there is an awful lot of backstitch involved. 
so you can see all that back stitch around the flowers so I think once that's in place I think you'll be able to notice a difference so it's not my favourite back stitch but for these type of designs it kind of comes in abundance really so yeah I'll be working on this kind of in between my other uh, stitch alongs so I also got a new needle minder which I'm I'll be using with my booth design. It's a it's a peacock. So from a company called Cirrus Creations. So I really like that, and the back's really nice as well. It's got black bows. So yeah, I'm kind of getting into needle minders a little bit more. Um, lots of the shops I like that sell them on Etsy and other places generally seem to be in the US or Australia and postage is quite high so I haven't bought anything from there yet I've kind of just uh, stuck with UK sellers on eBay mostly but I'm really tempted really tempted to buy some some of the really lovely ones I've seen from overseas okay so that's my third one um, what is next so oh yes I'll go for this one okay so I might um, I haven't said this already in this video, but in the last video, I told you about a Sparkly's grab bag that I bought that came with a random selection of fabrics, um, and that I hadn't really decided what to use any of the fabrics for. So this is a new start using one of those new fabrics. So this is the really, really lovely even weave that goes from. Uh, well white and then goes through shades of pink to shades of blue I'm deliberately hiding what I've done so far keep it a surprise build up the suspense but yeah so like white pink lilac and then all the way to blue and it is this design it was in my new or well, the newest issue of cross stitch crazy and as soon as I saw it I knew I knew I had to stitch it I, I never normally feel like that with design sometimes I think oh yeah they're really nice like that I'll stitch that one day but this was kind of like a an urge that I had so it's this one so not all those who wander are lost so quote from Lord of the Rings um yeah designed to be a book cover don't know if I'll use it for a book cover I'll use it for something but I'll decide that later and it's designed by Emma Congdon who does um who owns is it Stitch Rovia? I think it's called it's her company, and I really like her designs. I've done one before, which was a big um, UK sampler, which had lots of um, designs like that feature in or kind of related to different countries. So you had um, post box and the red arrows for um, England, and then we had. Uh, rugby ball and some sheep for whales you know that that kind of thing and they're all dotted about and I gave it to my friends for their uh, housewarming present and they've got it up in their hallway so that's really nice to see every time uh, I go around their house so yeah I always like doing cross stitches for people that I know will appreciate how much time's gone into them um, yeah so I don't always make it as gifts of people because I don't really know if people really appreciate just how much work goes into it and how many hours are spent so but I will make gifts to people that know just how much work is involved. Okay, so there are other designs on here too. So we've got a quote from Pride and Prejudice. And then there's another one which the picture's over the fold. Which is from, I think it's a Midsummer Night's Dream, this one. Though she be but little, she is fierce. Yeah. So, but the one that really appealed to me was the Lord of the Rings one. Not necessarily because it's from Lord of the Rings, but I quite like travelling, I quite like going to new places, and generally just like the design on the front. And I do like the quote. You know, because, you know, how do you discover new things if you don't wander? So, yeah, I like that one. So, I've decided not to go with the green decided to use some uh, rainbow hand dyed thread that I had, I've had in my stash for ages. I think I showed it to you before, my first video I think. 
So that is how far I've got already. So not all those who wander and then are lost is coming at some point. Now I seem to, oh yeah, got lots of trailing thread. Now you might have noticed that I started the top of it in the middle of the fabric. And that's because I, I felt that if I, it was just for the kind of effect of the fabric really, because I feel if I have a, a three inch border around, you'll get quite a lot of the pale at the top here, but missing out the white. And then you've got quite a lot of the blue, which I thought was good for the, the boat part of the design. And then possibly, if I cut this off, I can then use this for something else. Yeah, so quite a lot of thought went into that about where to actually start on the fabric. But I think, I think I've made the right choice there. Now, I kind of, every time I use variegated thread like that, I really have to concentrate on making sure I do whole crosses at a time and not one arm and do a row and then go back and go over the top with the other arm. Um, yeah, and then when I switch to a different whip, I, I go back to my original method because I kind of prefer it. I feel like it, I'm quicker that way. Okay. So that's on even weave. I'm not sure of the name of the colour. But again, that's on sparklies. Even though it's not sparkly. But that's alright. That one doesn't need to be sparkly. Okay, and that, just in case I... Any of you are interested in that one? That's in the latest cross stitch crazy, which has September 2016 on it, and it's issue 219, and it looks like that. Okay. I don't think that one will take too long to stitch up. It might do if I end up kind of concentrating on my stitch alongs, but I don't think it will take too long to do. Yeah, so that's the fourth of my five current whips that I've got to show you. Okay, so this is a very different one for me. You might remember in my previous video um, that in my Sparkly's grab bag of fabric, I had a really dark piece, but I was kind of unsure if I liked it or not, what I'll do on it. And I was kind of a bit... Mm. So prior to getting this fabric, I had been looking into getting... Um, a chart for either a Mirabilia Mermaid or a mermaid of some sort but Mirab Mirabilia Mermaid's kind of the beading the extent of the beading puts me off a little bit so what I did was I did some research on the internet found a really nice Joan Elliott Mermaid um, was kind of looking where the best place would be to buy the chart and then I realized by doing a Google image search that it was actually in an old issue of Cross Stitch Crazy which I knew I had and I thought it looked familiar that I'd seen it before. So it's from the September 2014 issue of Cross Stitch Crazy. I had to really search through my magazines to find this. Um, it's issue 193. And it's this. A couple of years ago, that would never have been my thing. I think Floss Tube has done this to me. Just seeing lots of people's different approaches to different designs, fabrics, mm. so bad influence, or oh, good influence, bad influence on the bank account, good influence on my creativity I suppose. Okay so this was a fabric, quite dark and smoky looking, thought it could kind of be like in the depths of the ocean, my husband wasn't so sure, he thought I should do something different on this but there we go. Try these things, see what happens. Okay, so that is what I have done so far. So the green here is the top of her top of her tail. Well, that sounds quite right, but you know, the top half just underneath her stomach. And then this is part of her tail also. And then the blue round here is the start of her top half of her body. And I'm really pleased with how well the colours show up on here. Like I said, I've never really worked on fabric this dark before. I was kind of worried about the colours and if any would kind of blend into the background. But yeah, I'm really pleased with that. The only trouble I find is I find the holes quite difficult to see sometimes. I don't know if that's 
because of my vision I wear glasses but um, you know lots of people wear glasses and wouldn't have much different prescription to me I would guess so yeah I normally put a lamp on in the evenings but this one kind of takes me quite a while because I sometimes find it quite difficult to see the holes and make mistakes um, so this is uh, I think 30, 32 count even weave I think um, yeah so if anyone has any tips I can't really get on with magnifiers very well kind of find it awkward to position myself using it comfortably and so on it just it's still fun to do it just takes me a little while longer to get this one going just because I kind of have to concentrate a little bit more on where the needle's going. But yeah, so really enjoying that one. This one has got some gold, is it Krenic? Krynic? Not sure on the pronunciation. I've heard it pronounced all sorts of different ways on floss tube videos. But it's got a gold one. Uh, very fine number four braid. I don't know what the colour is apart from it just looking gold. It's got no name on it. Yeah. So there we go. Also got some beads that I ordered for it too. Not as many beads as a Mirabilia. I thought this is a good start to get into it. Um, some white ones. And some, no, I really love these ones. Blue ones. Really nice. So I'm looking forward to trying those. Okay, so that's that. Alright, so that is what I have been working on for the past fortnight. I have a few plans that I'm starting to think about a little bit more this week. So I'm going to be taking part in the Olympic Challenge on the Stitch Mania Facebook group. I think I mentioned it before. I can't remember if I did or not. But on each day that the Olympics is on, stitch something which links to an Olympic theme. So one of the days is stitch something with water in it, relating to the aquatics event, um, and so on and so forth. So I think I've got things that can kind of link to most days. I mean two of my whips that I've shown you have got water related if not more than that water related features so yeah so I think I can make them fit um hopefully I'll get to stitch one every day during the Olympics that'll be nice just sitting watching I don't know javelin or diving or something and just yeah do a little bit of cross stitch my idea of a perfect day or week or however long the Olympics is on for um yeah, uh, what else? Don't think I have anything else to talk to you about. Oh, apart from this, actually, I was really impressed with this. So I subscribed to the World of Cross Stitching magazine and Cross Stitch Crazy, as you might have worked out from some of my whips. And this was the latest free gift in the world of cross, -stitch cross stitching, and it's a thread cutter. So I don't know if you can see in between the petals, it's got the blades of the thread cutter. But yeah, every now and again, the world of cross stitching and cross stitch crazy give you a free gift that's really useful. I know that, that sounds a little bit ridiculous. Normally, it's a free chart or um, yeah, just an extra large chart or something. But every now and again, you get something like this, which will sit in my sewing box or and be out, you know, to use with all my whips. So really, really impressed with that. Yeah, yeah, and. Oh yeah, tomorrow night I'm going to my friend's house for a stitching session. So it's normally me and three or four others that go. I think there's three of us definite so far. Um, might be another one or two. We shall see. So that'll be a nice that'll be a nice evening. And I think I will take my Clouds Factory um, postcards to do all the Lakeside Needlecraft. I really want to do that, but I think got to finish Rio first otherwise I won't finish it I think but I might change my mind but yeah so um, I think I'll finish the video here thank you to everyone who has watched my previous two videos and subscribed I think I'm up to 144 subscribers 
can't believe that many people want to watch me rambling. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much. Please, if you've got any questions or anything you'd like to know or correct me on anything I've said or pronounced wrong, let me know. And yeah, I'll hopefully uh, upload another video in a couple of weeks time. So thank you very much for watching and goodbye.